Welcome to Asaki Online. My name is Zenzel Ndebele. This is day 20 something of the lockdown. Now we have lost the account of the days because most people are always at home. You can't even tell whether it's a Monday, it's a Tuesday, it's a Sunday. Most people don't even go to church. So it's just the normal life or we are getting to uh, adapt to this lockdown situation. My name is Zenzel Ndebele, like I have said. And today in our program, we have invited uh, Reverend Hussein Spanda, who is the, uh, who is chairing the Food and Social Welfare Committee. I am for Bulawa Fighting COVID Trust. And we'll be talking about uh, uh, the food situation in Bulawa. We know that uh, it has been more than three weeks now. People are at home, they are not working, and definitely uh, there are some families who are starting to run out of food. We know that even the log before the lockdown, uh, people were struggling to feed themselves. And I can only guess that the situation has been worse. So I am popular in fighting COVID. They've been trying to organize food packs for the community, for those who are vulnerable, so that they try and mitigate uh, the effects, but they can only do so much. There are a lot of people, almost everyone, now need food aid. And we want to find out from them what they have done so far, how many people they are targeting, as well as the challenges. Spanda, welcome to the program. Well, thank you so much, Zenzele. I think, like what you are saying, we are losing count of days. But also, we are facing a situation where some people are now going for days without food. That's the sad reality that we are facing now. Um, yes, we have started food aid. Our initial target is uh, 10,000 households. So that means roughly we are looking at about 50,000 people to feed. And we started this week, uh, that's when we have started the food aid. We started this at Entumpane um, uh, and Njube uh, and Lobengula. So it will be going on for the whole of this week. For this particular week, our initial start, we are looking at 1,000 families. And um, it's a drop in the ocean. It's one tenth of the need that is there. Uh, and as we are aware, besides the usual vulnerable groups, people that are already on the social welfare list, we now have a growing list of people who have been in the informal sector who now need food. But it's not just people in the informal sector, the vendors and, uh, and other people like that, but it's people who are dependent on relatives in the diaspora relatives from South Africa who send groceries every month. It's no longer happening. So now we have people who are in the formal sector. We have people here in Matabeleland who are literally dependent on uh, Omalaich bringing groceries. It's not going to happen because of this lockdown. And as we realize, South Africa is extending its lockdown. So we have a big situation here where um, our people need food. And what we have said is no person must die of hunger uh, if we can avoid it. So the COVID-19 medical crisis has definitely brought into our, into our hands and into everyone's hands a, a huge, huge humanitarian crisis where families are beginning to, to starve, to run out of food, and we need to do something desperately. What we have just done now is a drop in the ocean. There's a lot that needs to be done. Yeah, I know that there will always be questions when it comes to food distribution. The first question that people ask you is, say, what criteria are you using to distribute the food? Thank you. It, I think it is very important. Like I explained, we got a list from the social welfare uh, departments, um, and we are working with groups that were already dealing with urban vulnerable groups, where so they are giving food aid in the form of cash payments. Uh, these were through EcoCash. So we've incorporated those groups, they are working with us, um, groups like ORAP. Uh, but now we have a new list of vulnerable people. These are people in the informal sector. So the vendors uh, associations, the various vendors associations, we've given them a toolkit to access the, uh, the levels where their members are. So this involves, do people have any alternative source of income or they're just solely dependent on vending, uh, how many people are in the household? Um, do these people, maybe do they farm? Do they have a, a place where they can get alternative sources of food? Um, we also check on child-headed households. As you know, we're already uh, facing challenges with HIV AIDS. And also we are checking on the elderly and vulnerable people with disabilities. These are people who might ordinarily not be able to have any other source of income. So we've put those lists together 
being helped by church groups on the ground as well. And so we are matching those lists together and sifting through them together with social welfare, with church groups, with vendors to try and come up with one big list that we can help. It's a growing list. And um, our initial experience in Ntumbane, where we're distributing uh, yesterday, uh, that is on Tuesday, and then Juve, which we are doing on Wednesday, is that you still have to carefully go through the group so that we don't miss out. For now, we're really looking for desperate cases. And we have to continuously sift through that list. You know, with our people, when you tell them that there is food, everyone wants to get it. So you really have to make sure it's going to the right people. So how much food do you have? Yeah, at the moment, we don't have a lot. Uh, we got uh, through M4 against COVID-19 initiative, we got um, 1,000 bags of millimil, these are 10 kgs, uh, from Sitco. And also we got a group of Bulawayo women who are based in the UK, uh, called Kogin Lovugazi. They gave us 400 bags, these are 10 kg bags. Um, they got local millers to do that for us, so they've only given us half so far. We're just waiting for the other balance from them. Um, we also got uh, United uh, Refineries. Um, in fact, coincidentally, our chairman is from that company. He, graciously, they've meshed uh, for every millimil they've given us cooking oil. We also got the Zimbabwe Christian Alliance to respect on us. They've bought beans that we've added, but also we have local farmers through turning Matebele and Green and uh, through Sondelani ranches who are matching as well the milli meal with uh, cabbage and tomatoes. And also we got an initiative called Feed the City. They bought soap bars for us and uh, they have more cooking oil, I think, that they are bringing. Uh, but also through Feed the City, we we're doing an initiative where people put food on beans in supermarkets. And that one we are targeting then groups, especially people within the eastern or low density suburbs who are very vulnerable as well. So we're doing small food parcels for them. The bulk of the big food, we are channeling it into the townships at the moment. So our initial uh, our start is 1,400 uh, bags of 10 kgs of millimil and, and you know what I've described in terms of beans, cooking oil and so forth. So it's a small drop. We are definitely looking for more because we've got 9,000 households that we still need to get to. Before and, we even uh, got mm. to the COVID uh, crisis, uh, the, the, the Zimvac study was looking at 7 million vulnerable yeah. pa uh, families in, in, in Zimbabwe, uh, about 3 million of those in urban areas. Yeah. And I think Bulawayo is uh, around 160,000 households yes. that are not able to you know, fend for themselves. And now we have people who are out of employment. Yeah. How bad is the situation going forward? The situation is very bad. Um, I'll just tell you a story. In Tumbane, when we're giving food, one old, uh, not very old, I'll say middle-aged woman, came to me and said, you know what, Reverend, for the past three days, we have not had any food with my children. And um, this is the first time I'm having a meal. Um, and this is someone who's not very old. And she said, you know, I, I just, she was living on vending. I just don't have any food, no bread, no plan to get any food anyway. So she was so relieved when I gave her food. Then I met this Gogo again, who had gone almost for three days as well, without any food, with their grandchildren. So the, the situation is bad, but also there are men who would ordinarily find ways. You know, <clears throat> a lot of people here were surviving on gardening. Um, and they will do gardens on part-time basis and get a lot of money. So it's very bad. But also people, the factories are closed now, shops are closed. So they are not going to work. And these are companies that are not opening now. There is just no way in which they are going to pay anyone. They want to have that money. And we don't have any security, social security plan in Zimbabwe that might be able to sustain something like that, unless government will announce that later. But we don't have it at the moment. So what it means is all these people who are working now, besides those that, are, that were not employed at all, are likely not to get any salaries or any money. So it's going to be bad. I think um, uh, on the 160,000 households that are here in Bulawayo will have more added on them. So we already need to be thinking beyond the 10,000 
household is just our initial start. But we need to be thinking beyond. Because if you look at the situation of COVID-19 right now, we are definitely going to be heading for more lockdowns, more closure, and uh, more staying at home uh, than anything else. So people need to be thinking beyond now. We need to be thinking long term. And that's what we are trying to do now, to prepare ourselves for the long term. And I think one of the big things we need to think about, if we talk to people about staying at home, as long as someone has no food, they will not stay at home. They will try to go out to look for food. And what this initiative is doing is to say to people, as we say stay at home, let's bring food near to them. Because even the distribution points are as near to where the people are as possible, so that we don't have people walking for long distance. In fact, part of the thinking now, I'm thinking even of doing door-to-door -door deliveries in the future, so that people don't walk at all. Yeah, I was going to ask you, you have already raised the issue of door-to-door -door deliveries. I'm saying one of the areas, why, or the reasons why people are staying home is because to maintain social distancing. And now we're gathering people to uh, distribute food. What are the challenges that you're facing in this uh, food distribution? Um, our initial challenge has been that um, the moment we tell people to come to collect food, uh, we, we had given them time slots so that we have 50 people at a time. But the moment they hear that there is milly meal, there is food, because they are hungry, they have not been eating, they will rather come very early. And what we have is a situation where everyone is coming early. So what we had to do with the help from the police were to, and the city council social welfare uh, officials and the pastors, we were to try and maintain a distance uh, of a meter apart or two meters apart, using an arm length, asking them to keep an arm length from each other. We've, so it was a constant problem. In fact, we had to close one, one feeding station in Lopemola to just say, let's rearrange people, let's give them numbers so that they come on fixed time slots. But as you know, our African culture, we don't keep time. But when it comes to food, people rather come early because everyone thinks I won't find it. But we had set enough food for those that we had you know, selected. But everyone doesn't believe us, so they want to come early. So there's a big challenge. And now what we are thinking of is uh, working with very small groups, distributing small groups over a longer period of time. But eventually, I think where we are going will be to do food dropouts and ensure that we just drop food at home and make sure that people don't move at all. Yeah, there might be people who are willing to contribute to either um, uh, buy food or uh, we, we see a shortage uh, these days. If there's someone who says, you know, there is corruption, I don't trust giving people money, but I want to bring 10 kgs of food or 10 kgs of milli meal or sugar, what are the arrangements that they can do to get in touch with you? Yes, well, we, first of all, for those that might want to eco cash, Amphobla COVID-19 has got an eco cash account. Uh, it's got bank accounts details. In terms of dropping food, we had selected um, shopping centers where people can drop food in a bin, like in Ascot, Bradfield, um, Zonki Zizwe, a Hillside. Even in the townships now, we have set up some sites where people can drop those, those bins. We are trying to have every shopping center in the townships to have a bin where people can drop something. And of course, we have churches if people can contact churches, the nearest church leader, we have churches from Brethren in Christ, from the Catholics and so forth, we are asking each church now to have a bin so that people can drop food there. For those that want to buy food and have it delivered, those arrangements can also be made with us because some of the food that we have donated was actually bought and delivered straight to us. For instance, uh, Sitco, uh, well, we thank DHL, which transported the food from Arari, the millimeter from Arari to here. So DHL carriages are for us. So everyone is working together to make it happen. And uh, our appeal is everyone can do something. I've had calls from the United States, Canada, from people from Bulawayo who are saying, we don't want anyone to starve. Let's find a way to, to push this food through. And that will happen. And of course, I am for Bulawayo against COVID-19. We have got our um, strong finance system that has been set up through PNA but also everything that is received, I mean everything to the last bit, is being audited by Deloitte so that we account for everything. So we've got our auditors in place, but also the organizations involved that are working on this also have got their own accountability systems in place with audit firms and so forth. 
So we've really created a watertight system for everyone. Yeah, definitely, that's important because my last question to you was going to be, I mean, people are always uh, worried about the issue of accountability, that uh, are we not donating uh, so that we won't find this tattoo with the campaign or who's up to ah, so we're going to do this thing, is I'm going to donate why, what are we, how, and you have explained, and my question again to you would be, how transparent is your system? Do you have mechanisms to make sure that food reaches the intended beneficiaries? Yes, first of all, I think uh, through CZI, we've been set up as the Secretariat. But like I explained with PNA, who are our, the, the firm that is helping with getting our accounts done, and then Deloitte will audit everything. But then at food level, we have been, our people have been trained by World Vision International to set up a system for accountability for every food item that is donated. So it's being documented and will be submitted finally to our audit firm so, to, to, you know, so that we can account to everyone who has donated in terms of where the food reached, uh, who received it. So at um, reception level, our, recip our recipients have to sign using their own hand for the food that they've received, the amounts that they've received. So we, we put the food on a table and we put the paper on a table for them to sign so that we don't we, we maintain the social distance so yes it's fully accounted for and will be given to the public to know who has received what and and you know how it has been used thank you very much for explaining the the whole process of food distribution that was uh, reverend spanda you know who's chairing the food and social welfare committee who um Bulawai, i'm for Bulawai fighting COVID trust and the accountability of course is one of the most important issues and we have seen that uh, uh, with this crisis of COVID, people have been saying you know our, our, our money is going to be accounted our food stuffs that are donated going to be accounted and spanda is assuring us that if you donate uh, food packs or its money is going to reach whoever is supposed to uh, benefit and I'm encouraging every Zimbabwean, every African, every citizen in the world who's watching to say um, our people need help and if you can spare a dollar, if you can spare a 2 kg of millimil or a 10 kg of millimil or anything that you have that you think can be of benefit to someone, please uh, come on board and let's save our people because uh, there are a lot of people who are out of work right now who don't know where they're going to get the next meal. I was talking to someone last night who told me that uh, they now resort to sleeping at 3 a.m. so that they will wake up the next day at 12 and then have tea at 1 so they can just do one or two meals a day so that they save the food that they have. So the situation is very bad and people are resorting to all sorts of tactics to save the little that they have. So I'm hoping and appealing to you to please come on board and help the people. We all need to go through this and if you have anything extra that you think can go a long way, come on board and uh, let's save our people. My name is Zenzel Ndebele. Till you meet again tomorrow, have a good day.